In this tutorial, we're going to look at using fast wavelength transforms to analyze time series data. So, in order to begin, we need some time series data. And I've written this Octave script here to generate some simulated data for us. It's going to generate a Poisson time series, a Gaussian time series, and a Brownian motion time series. So, let's fire up Octave. and generate our data. There we go. Let's start a new plot. And let's take a look at those data. So this is our Poisson distribution. Uh, that's exactly what you would expect for a Poisson time series with uh, lambda equal to 3. And if you don't know what that means, uh, check it out on Wikipedia. The vertical axis is the amplitude of our Poisson time series and the horizontal axis, as always, is going to be time. So you can think of time going from left to right in, uh, in increasing fashion. Here's our, our Gaussian distributed time series. And now let's take a look at our Brownian motion trace, sometimes called the drunkard's walk. Ah, that's a nice one. There it is again. Time on the horizontal and amplitude uh, on the vertical. So how do we run this through the fast wavelet transform software? In other words, how do we get wavelet coefficients out of our time series? Well, um, we use the following. What I like to do is I use cat. And if you're unfamiliar with cat, you can always type man cat and look it up and see what it does. But I like to cat the data using a Unix pipe, which the pipe symbol is can be gotten by pressing shift and then pressing backspace. It's a little symbol above the backspace. And putting it right into FWT. Now the input, uh, the input of, uh, uh, looks like this. Two columns. The first column is time, or index would be our horizontal axis. And the second column is the amplitude of the signal. And when I cat that into FWT, now the first column is still the 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 order of the of of the um, of the coefficient. Now the second column actually is the wavelet coefficient. We can generate the inverse transformation. In other words, we can transform forward and then back the inverse by using dash i. Or you can use double dash and then write out inverse. And let's see that that's actually working. So let's print out the first 10 lines of our data. Here are the first 10 lines, first 10 rows of our data. Now, if the inverse transformation is working correctly, then a forward transform and then a backward transform should give us the identical first 10 lines. And there we have it. Okay, fine. Um, these may be doubles and these are ints, but uh, you can see, see that these are still, um, numerically, these are equivalent. It's with a numerical precision, these, are, these, these numbers are equivalent. One other way that you can get data into the fast wave or transform is by using the, the indirection operator. In other words, the, the less than symbol. Like so. Um, this is useful if you want this output to be the input of another uh, uh, program. For example, Valgrind, a memory profiler. When I'm using Valgrind, I have to check uh, Val I have to check the usage this way. Um, works a little slowly. And here is the output. Most of the time, however, I just use cat and I'll say cat brownian into FWT. And the nice thing about using Unix pipe, by the way, is that I can stack commands. 
now I can stack this into um, sort if I want the Unix command sort or I can put this into less if I like like so anyway um, I hope this was informative there are many other things that we can do with uh, um, the fast wave will transform and I will show you those in, uh, in, in upcoming tutorials. Thanks a lot.